Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Hines, a school counselor here at Daniel Hand High School. The purpose of this video is to talk about the different standardized tests in the ACT versus the SAT and some information that goes along with each of them. To start, I do want to give some introductions. Uh, like I said, I'm Mr. Hines, a school counselor here. We also have Mrs. Hawley, our program coordinator. We have Mrs. Coyle, we have Mrs. Judson, Mrs. Scarston, and Mrs. Curran. Never ever hesitate to reach out to us for a question, concern, or anything. Um, we will be more than happy to direct you into some information and give you the, um, the tools and the specifics to answer that specific question. So what I want to do is talk about the, the differences between the ACT versus the SAT. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and pull up one of the, one of the better ones that I found. Um, it talks about which test is right for you. And it goes over everything. So we're gonna compare the ACT versus the SAT. Some main differences that they like to pinpoint um, is that the ACT includes a science section right here, and the SAT includes one SAT math section on which you may not use a calculator. While the ACT, you can use a calculator on all of them. The differences are below the test structure, the length. The lengths are pretty similar, except for a 10 minute difference regarding the essay. The reading passages, the science section, which I discussed above, that the SAT does not have one. The math topics that it talks of, that it focuses on. One of the main differences is that this has statistics and some probability. But on the other hand, the SAT, sorry, that was the ACT, and the SAT does not cover that statistical part, along with the probability part. Um, <clears throat> calculator policy we spoke about. The essays is an important top is an important subject, and the reason why I say that is because you have to be really organized with the universities or colleges that you're applying to, and see if they require an essay. If they require an essay, we really do recommend that you take it. And if they don't require or will not take it into consideration, I would not take it. So please be able to recognize which one of your colleges does require that essay. Um, the scoring. The scoring is different on each of these tests. For an SAT, the perfect score is a 1600. That's the highest you can get. And it starts from a 400 to a 1600 scale. You do not get penalized for wrong answers. On the ACT, it has a score, it's scored on a scale of one through 36. So 36 being a perfect score, a scale of one, of one to 36. So, as I said, the scoring is different. And a lot of students will have questions, hey, how do I send my scores to the colleges that I'm interested in attending? Well, on the end of this, um, there will, in an email, I will send two links regarding how to send essays, um, sorry, how to send the SAT and ACT scores for each specific website. So registering for the SAT and ACT, all you do is you go to, this, to the specific website. So what I'm going to do is show you each one. We're going to stop the share, and we're gonna share a new one, and we're gonna start with the ACT. So the ACT is, this is the website, you go to actstudent.org. And as you can see right here, you can register for the ACT. And it is a link that brings you to a create my ACT account. And what you'll do is you'll click this, and you will start the process of signing up. Regarding the SAT, you will do that on collegeboard.org. And so this is the College Board website. And if you have an account, you will sign in and log in here. It is very important to not have two College Board accounts. So before creating one, please make sure you, have, you do not have one already. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of times, which is fixable, your scores do get lost in between both accounts. So you do wanna make sure that you only have one. For the SAT, what you do is you sign up. If you need to, you log in. And when you go to SAT down here, you look for fall SAT dates and deadlines, checking for centers, registration deadlines, all this proper information. On each of these websites, both the ACT and the SAT, there are practice, web, practice tests involved. So PSAT and um, scores, you can go to SAT practice, taking the test. So it has a lot of information regarding each of these. And you can do all of this practice information on both the ACT and the SAT. The costs are important. The cost for each 
they they differ. Um, so the SAT is forty nine dollars and fifty cents um, without the essay, and with the essay, it is sixty four dollars and fifty cents. The ACT is forty six dollars without the essay, and it's sixty two dollars and fifty cents with the essay. So, like I said, the differences is probably 50, is about fifteen bucks, fifteen dollars each one. And it's important to stay organized, like I said before, and to make sure that your school that you're applying to or are interested in does not require the essay. And if it does, we do highly recommend that you take it. Regarding the dates, the dates are really impacted due to COVID-19. So, you know, we have a lot of, we have cancellations, we have um, rescheduled um, SAT dates, but as of right now, there are confirmed dates. I'm going to start with the ACT. As you can see, the ACT dates for the year 2020 to 2021 are below. The next date available for you to take is February 6th of 2021 with a regular deadline of January 8th. What that means is that you have to register prior to January 8th or on January 8th with, so you do not have a late fee. If you do, if you do miss that date and you schedule and you register between January 9th and the 15th for that February 6th date, then you will have that late registration deadline uh, fee. There's also a test April 17th, June 12th, and July 17th. So whichever one you decide to take as a family for the ACT, if you decide to, is, is totally up to you. Moving forward, we're going to now look at the SAT dates. And as you can see, um, the SAT dates, we've already gone through December 5th. Um, January 21st of 2021, due to based on College Board, is a tentative date, and the registration deadline is to be determined, along with the late registration deadline. What they're going to do is provide that information on that date, at a, um, hopefully soon. They also, we also have a March 13th, May 8th, and June 5th date remaining for our, our students. And, um, you know, what I would say is it's great to take the test. You could take these tests as many times as you want. Um, they do, we do as colleges will take a super score, meaning that you could take the highest math and the highest English. With that being said, it is important to study to take some practice tests and to work with other people when needed to help you with, um, on certain topics. So one of the other things regarding the SAT are called subject tests. Subject tests are where you can get specific into a subject that you're interested in or really strong in. Some schools require them, some schools don't. And if you're applying to schools that require them, we highly recommend taking the, the amount that they ask. What it is, it's a one it's a one subject test. You go into a room and you, what you will do is take that test out of 800 points. And with, let's just, for example, say you're going to take the AP physics test. Um, AP, you're gonna take the, the subject test of physics. Um, what you're gonna do is you just go into a room and you will take that test and specifically to physics and nothing else and you'll get a score out of 800. And you could report those scores and one to the colleges that do require them. Also within the college board are what's called APs, advanced placement classes that are offered here at Daniel Hand. And that you'll also have the chance to sign up for and take a test and score they one through five. Um, colleges, the, the colleges you're applying to will determine if and how many uh, AP tests they'll take and the recommended score that they have. Um, so, you know, the information here is really important. Um, you know, never hesitate to contact us. Um, never hesitate to reach out to your counselor. Um, I hope this video really does help. And as always, um, never hesitate to um, ask us questions. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.